remember what day you reviewed like the exam questions? Um, no. And oh, right. Let me mention that. Uh, I have no idea what's going on with YouTube right now. It ain't just me and my web and, and us. The websites are basically a bunch of other people from all sorts of other institutions and web pages in general are reporting issues with embedding playlists on YouTube. So um, not my fault. I didn't do anything. Nobody saw me do it. I'm not speaking about without an attorney present. Um, so, you know, but all, in all seriousness, like I'm just waiting for it to be resolved. Now, if you want to watch the videos, uh, just go to the, and I'll, send, I'll blast this out in an email later after class. If you want to watch my videos, very simply, just go to my YouTube channel, Professor Rosen. Just search Professor Rosen on YouTube and you'll find it. It's my, my profile picture has the picture of the, uh, of, of a moon. So, uh, um, very boring generic photo. Okay. So, uh, and then all you can find all the playlists there. They just aren't, you know, as easily linked, but until the, then, you know, I'm not going to try to go through this and, and try to fix it when there's the potential that they might fix it and, you know, re-break stuff. So, hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll get started with this. Now, ah, yes, the final exam questions. Mm -hmm. Is it really dark outside? It is dark outside today. It's overcast. So it's not just you, it is overcast today. So let me go over the three questions again, because again, those three questions, uh, I keep repeating them, but it's worthwhile that basically that everybody hears those three questions. First question will be a regular expression along the lines of, hey, here's a file. Uh, you know, here's a file. Um, sorry, here is a file with a bunch of stuff like social security numbers inside and they're embedded inside of it so it might have a bunch of names and stuff in it and there might be social security numbers sprinkled around please create a new file where it's the same file but all the social security numbers have been removed and i'll provide an example input file and an example output file those input and output are just there for the sake of you to test your code to make sure it works but basically it's going through and basically replacing stuff um those kind of things by the way are going to be super easy to replace uh, if you do your um, if you do it with regular expressions. Second thing is going to be here's something in in uh, Python. You haven't seen it before, um, but it is something that exists in Python. It's just built in. Here's the kind of problem we use it on. Here's the documentation page. Here's a problem. Notice how it's similar to the problem. How the problem how the problem and the tool that I presented go together. Please solve the problem using that tool. And then the third one is going to be a board game uh, where, a, where I ask you to do a Monte Carlo approximation of a board game. Uh, so one example, and if you want to practice for that one, the example I gave is code, uh, code up a model for shoots and ladders or snakes and ladders as it's sometimes called. And and ask how and try to figure out how many turns on average it would take for a player to win. All right. So we've got ourselves. Uh, so we. So this is continuing our discussion of classes. We've created three classes so far, although we haven't really done too much with them, and they still are subject to change. But the p individual thing, the individual moving parts, it would be similar to the p pig lab. Yes. So. Uh, and I'll be doing more Monte Carlo approximations uh, next week as to prepare, help us prepare for the exam. Okay. So, um, because we're coming towards the end of semester, right? I think we've got what next week and then the 26th, but not us, the 26th. Yeah. So next week I plan on devoting towards doing like problems that would be similar to the first and the third that would be on the exam. Okay. 
So here we've got ourselves our three classes, which are basically our three parts that are moving. We've got our board, which is just has a which is just has a grid in it with nine empty squares, right? Like a tic-tac-toe board. Uh, we have our pieces, which are the gobblers, which are either going to be blue or um, blue or um, they're going to be blue or orange, and then they have a size. I just mentioned that uh, with the class captures are unavailable. They're still available on YouTube. It's a problem with YouTube. The embedding is having an issue. I don't know what it is, but it's not my, it's not anything I did that was wrong. It's not something that Canvas did. It's something wrong with YouTube. So you need the self and the function to, um, to basically ref to, uh, to be it so that we can, so that we know which piece, uh, which object we're referring to. We're referring to this object. We might sometimes replace this with me or this in other languages. Um, so you need the self, you need the self because that's basically saying, how are you going, what variable are you going to use to refer to yourself? That's always the first thing. The first thing in every function you write in a object is what variable are you going to use to refer to yourself? Now that's exclusive to Python and other programming languages. They have special keywords, but it's just a quirk of Python. So here we've got self color. Um, or sorry, we've got self color size. So basically we're saying we're going to refer to this piece at using the variable self. That piece's color is going to be equal to the past in color. That piece's size is going to be equal to the past in size. And I'm going to add one more because these gobblers were hollow, right? They can stand on top of other pieces. So I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put Eden is equal to none. And that's going to be used to hold whatever piece that we've currently eaten. Uh, if we if we're being placed on the top of another piece, and so then I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and create another function called gobble self comma other, and I'll just simply say, and all this will do is say self dot. Uh, self.eden is equal to other. And that's just basically going to say that I've put this guy on top of the other guy. And so, because, and that's going to be important because we can move these things around um, if pieces are covering up another. Okay, so we've seen, so we have a function that allows us to put stuff on top of another thing. And then we have a function that tells, can we put it on top of another thing? Okay, um, let's see. So we can also create, um, and there is one other thing. The pieces don't really need to exist until we create them. So there's no point in create, in, sorry, until we place them. So there's really no point to having that here. What we can do instead is just create a dictionary over here. And I'm gonna say we have pieces is equal to uh, big, actually, I'm going to say we have, I'm going to just completely, gonna, yeah, I'm going to say self.big is equal to two, self. Dot, eh, we can just keep it as it is. There's no need to change it. That we're, 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 I'm wasting time just going over semantics at that point. All right, so now we need to be able to actually uh, figure out how to do this. So def. Um, so basically there's two things we can do, which is that we can place a piece. So we can, so what actions do we need a model for the board? We need a model, uh, player places a piece, player places, say player moves a piece. So those are the two things you can do. You can either play a piece or you can move a piece that already is on the board and move it on top of something else, okay? Or move it to an empty spot. So those are the two things you can do with goblet gobblers. You can 
play a, place a piece on top of another piece, or you can move a piece on top of another piece. Okay, we also want to have a check, uh, check a wind condition. So check wind condition, uh, check for winner. Basically, we need to check to see if there's somebody who's won. Um, let's see. And then we also need to check. Um, OK. So place a piece, moves a piece. Um, and then we're going. To ch and then we need a valid function. Valid. Check if proposed move is valid, right? That way we can keep it uh, keep it so that somebody el else won't do that. Um, check if proposed move is valid. Um, we can do that for checking if pieces remaining. We'll just print out the number of remaining pieces. Um, but if but we'll have an if statement in here, making basically saying, hey, you can't do that if you have, or we'll have an if statement that will prevent you from placing something. Um, but let's say print board status is another one. All right. So we'll want to do that print board status as well. So let's go ahead and start by playing um, by player placing a piece. Let's do that. So def self. We're gonna do play self. Which player is it? And um, hmm, I'm just trying to think about how many functions I want to doing this so because it's all about organization how do i want to organize this well let's let's go ahead and because checking for winner is easy player moves a piece so the question is what okay so we'll do this and basically so okay yeah i think we'll just simply say hey i want to put a piece that this player let's write a function def play uh place self and we want to say a self player wants to play uh place a specific piece on this row and this column yep a lot of information already in there but that's gonna work and we're gonna assume that this is a valid move that they can do okay because break it uh break it that helps us break it up. Um, and so what we'll say is, hey, how can I put, um, and what we'll simply do is say self gr dot grid row column row column is equal to player dot um is equal to what oh yeah we equal to that piece we don't really need the player uh in there at all other than then to basically saying um other than to deduct the size of that. Size is either one, two, or three. So let's go ahead. One, one, two, two, three, three. Okay. And then we say, and then we'll update the player's count. Player dot. We'll do that for right now. That's really all we seem to need for this. Um, all right, but what if there was something already there? Ah, yes, that's what we have to ask here. That's why I did this as a separate function. So what if, if self.grid, 
So what if there's something already there? If self dot grid dot if self grid row column is none, if there's nothing already is. It's not equal to none. So if there's nothing, so if there's something there, right? If that space is not is not empty, then we can put something, then we can gobble that piece up. So um we'll just simply say piece dot gobble. Yeah, piece I piece dot gobble self dot gobble the piece that is there and then put the piece there that's all you have to that's all we have to do um so if it's empty we basically store that piece inside the other piece and then put the piece down over there that's all we needed let's see now, what if they move a piece? Def, and we're assuming that these are valid moves that we can do, that basically the pieces will fit on top of each other. We'll, we'll program in the other, the exceptions afterwards because we need the base first. Self piece, we wanna move this piece to a row and we wanna move this to a column. Okay, so first thing we need to do is Basically, we got to say, hey, um, we want to move piece from row to column. Ah. Hmm. <laughs> okay. But how do we know where we're moving it from? We can embed that information inside of piece. Why not? Um, Self.eden, self dot row is equal to, we're going to start out with negative one. Self dot call is equal to negative one. And what we can do is that we can um, We can say what we want to what we want it to be. So um, self dot row is equal to row. Self dot call is equal to call. When to do this this way versus any other way and accessing it directly. It's better to, if you're going to basically move if you're going to switch around attributes. It's better to do it inside the class if you can. So what I'll do is now I'll say hey uh, piece dot place. row call. So now, again, over here, old row is equal to piece dot row, old call is equal to piece dot call. Why do I care about these things? Why do I care? Well, the reason I care is because um, there, I care for two reasons. Um, we, I care because what we're going to be doing is that we are going to, I'll go ahead and actually refer to this to a different name, update location. That seems like a better idea, update location. So now we've got the old row, oh, call, column. I mean, this is a side effect. It's not very professional in terms of programming to do it like that, but uh, you know what? I don't need to do that. I could do it like that, but it's sloppy. I could pass in the, yeah, I'll just pass them in as parameters. That way there's less, less here. Yeah. So you can see as by basically you see me second guessing myself, like I'm just trying to keep my thing, my functions as like as simple as possible, right? So row column, 
And so, yeah. And if that means that I make my function calls longer, then that's okay. Because it's better to have all these things in, in as a function. So I want to move this piece from its old location to the new location, which makes it fairly straightforward. And what I'm going to do now is just I need to, I need, uh, I need this line first off, or this part from here. Um, which is perfectly easy, but the, there's a reason I have that because when you move a piece, remember it's hollow, you're not moving, you're picking up just the outer layer. There might be pieces under that. So what we do then is say, when we move the piece, we say self um, dot, uh, self dot grid old row self dot grid old row old column and by the way if you haven't noticed a lot of um a lot of what we're doing is just basically figuring out not how to do it, but the way we want to do it. We have a lot of ways that we want to do it, but we're, I'm like looking and thinking and using my experience of having made a lot of mistakes, figuring out how do I keep it from getting too tangled, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, hey, uh, I'm moving it from this old row to the, uh, and this old row column to this new row and column. And so any piece that was underneath it should be in that piece now. If there's no piece underneath it, eat it guess what? The default value for Eden was none, so it'll be an empty space again. And now if we're moving it into a not empty space, I gobble up that old piece and uh, do that. I could actually just simply put this in instead and make it really short. Basically have this function call that one. See self dot place and then and there we go and that would call this. All right, so we've got a way to place. We've got a way to move. We need to check if the proposed move is valid, which is going to be the bulk of this program and then we need to check for a winner which is another bulk of the program so to check if there's a winner def is winner and that's going to take in a uh that doesn't need to take in anything but ourselves so what we need to do is we need to check all the rows all the all the rows all the columns and uh to and all the and the two diagonals to see if we've got a winner so um Let's, you know what? I'm gonna break this uh, up into three things. Um, def, so I'm gonna break it up into, into three functions. Why not? Three very, now that seems like more work, but I'm gonna, but it's gonna be easier to debug when I do that. Check rows, self. Um, winner in rows. Pass. So if you can guess what I'm doing, I'm checking for a winner in the rows. I'm going to check if there's a winner in the columns. And then I'm going to check if there's a winner in the diagonals. Right? This is all the board's job to do. I know, making more, you're thinking, what, why are you making more work for yourself? Well, it's just very, this is all the extra work that I just did here, which is me typing in the function names and pass because now I'm just got split up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Hey, yeah, I know it doesn't match the regular expression you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say return a uh, winner. I'm going to return self dot winner in rows or self dot winner in columns or self dot winner in diagonals. If any of those three things are true, this entire thing will be true. Got to call them because they're functions. 
doesn't like me using these uh, names, I don't think. That's why I'm getting an error. Okay. Yeah, it's just saying, hey, it's not, uh, does rename, rename it to match it. Yeah, they want, okay. Fine, I'll make it Python compatible. Python really doesn't like me using ca uh, camel case for some reason. So, or the Python linter doesn't like me using camel case. And I don't like red lines in my code. So, um, you know. So let's do winner in rows. So how do I check if I, there's a win? I, well, I have three rows. So I have a grid. So for a row in grid, for row in grid, if um, row dot, so yeah, if for row in self dot grid, if a row dot contains, sorry, if none not in row and row zero equal to row one equal equal to row two. No, it would run just fine. It was just giving me, it was just yelling at me. So for row in self.grid, if none, not in row. So basically making sure, hey, if there's a blank space, there's not a winner. That's what it's saying. And if row one, so if there's, if there's no blank spaces in the row and the three spaces are equal to each other, well, actually row one dot color is equal to row two dot color. That's what we care about because these things are pieces. A three dot color, and now, sorry. And now we've got a dot color over here because we know this is another piece. And then, what are, then in that case, if, if there's not a blank and the three colors match, bingo, return true. And then at the end, and that not else return false because otherwise we wouldn't get to any of the other role, rows. But if we get to the end of this, then we wouldn't have a winner in the rows. So we return false. Okay. Next for um, self dot. So grids are a bit net. So doing a com is a bit more annoying. I'll just have to do it manually without the for loop, which is, well, not necessarily manually. Uh, without the for loop, but um, for for column in range threes, for column number in range three. So here I'm going to go through the columns and basically say, uh, if row zero, so if row one zero com, so we're checking to basically anywhere where the, all the columns are the same, not column none. We don't have uh, nuns running around in my program, numbers. So remember, so how does this work, right? I'm doing with a two-dimensional array here. So how does this work or two-dimensional list, right? So we have our rows up here. So row zero, so this is, sorry, this is my rows right over here. Row, row zero, call, sorry, row zero, row one, in my row two over here, right? Because it's rows, not X, Y. So it kind of gets a bit weird. Now over here, we would have a uh, column zero, column one, yeah, a 
I'll put col over here. Column zero, one, and two. So what I'm doing is I'm going through each of the columns, column zero, column one, column two, which is second parameter over here. So I'm gonna say, hey, if this, if this space is not none, and this space is not none, and this space is not none. So that's the first thing I'm gonna say. And is not is like is kind of like saying um, equal. So I'm just gonna do, but so I don't have to really explain the difference. Not equal to if row one not equal to none and row one is not equal to none, is not equal to none. And row two is not equal to none. And now it's gotten too long. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, word wrap. Same line, it's just we simply wrapped it there. So because it's a long line, I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to try to do it all as a one liner. So, ah, and yeah, that doesn't make sense. Row it should be self.grid. So a lot of the errors I'm making here, which are errors are unforced errors. I'm not forcing these. I'm literally making mistakes as I'm coding and I'm also catching them as I'm coding. How do you do the cross through this? Not equal like that. This is just my font do it's my my fonts making it pretty and easy to read. That's all. Well, it's making it pretty and easy to read for me. Uh, I'm using a font called Cascadia font by Microsoft or Cascadia code by Microsoft that does that. So all that is is that it's the ex when the exclamation point and the and the equal sign get together, it's abusing so, uh, a feature in fonts called ligatures, where if you put like an F and an L together, it will kind of overlap or an F and an I together, right? But here it's just saying, oh, if I've got two of these things, I'm gonna replace it with a not equal sign. So first off, I gotta check to make sure that, the, that if those three aren't none, and now if, I'll put it in a second if statement rather than putting in an and and making it awful. So we know they're not none. And now basically what we're going to do is the same thing we were doing earlier. If the colors are equal. Except that I need to turn true. Except that will always be true because I haven't switched which row we're talking about. And then two. I know, I know. It looks like a lot. It says merge this statement with the enclosing one. Ah, oh, no, no, thank you. That seems like a, I could do that, but no. But basically zero, then, so I'm checking K, hey, is this is zero, 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 one, zero, two, are they all not none? Okay, great. Are they equal to each other? If not, move on to zero, uh, sorry, zero, 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 one, zero, two. Now move on to zero, one, 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 two, one. And if not, two, zero, two, one, two, two, two. basically the same exact thing I'd have to do for tic-tac-toe. And now I'll go ahead and do winner in calls. Okay. Oh, return false over here because, and it detected that right, and that detected that right away. That was pretty cool. That detected that, no problem. So winner in calls, winner in rows, and now winner in diagonal. So now the diagonals aren't as terrible as you, as you might think. There's only two combinations as opposed to three, which makes it really easy. And both of them have like the same kind of deal over here. Where you've got zero, where you go in zero, one, one, two, two, or um, zero, two, one, one, uh, two, zero. So we'll do the first diagonal, then we'll check the second diagonal. So no need for a, for a loop. We'll just do an if statement here. And again, a return false by default, right? If we find a winner, great, return true. But if we don't find a winner in the diagonals, return false. So what we're gonna do is say, hey, if 
row zero. So if self dot grid zero zero not equal to none and self dot so as you can see I'm just gonna do this same kind of thing repeat it again. So our three spaces are zero, zero, one, one, two, two. So if they're not equal to, so if they're all not empty, right? If they're all not empty, then, um, <laughs> Okay, if they're not empty, then what are we gonna do? Then basically we now need to check to make sh sure. Uh, if self dot grid zero 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 zero, sorry, if self dot grid co dot color at that location, if the color of the piece at that location is equal to the color of the piece at um at at one one, and if that's equal to the piece at there's no need for an and. It's so if grit and again you can do this like triple equals in Python, but not necessarily in other languages, which is nice. Otherwise you would have to do if grid zero zero is equal to self grid one one, and if grid one one is equal to two two, but you can do it like this in Python and it automatically work, I believe. Return true. So if that diagonal has no nuns, and if the diagonal all have the same color, return true. And then we just simply do the same thing, but we're just gonna switch the coordinates to zero, two, one, one, and two, zero. So zero, two, so zero, two, and two, zero. And that's it for the diagonals. Okay, so we've done quite a bit. So let's go ahead and test out some stuff like printing out the board status. So print def um, So let's go ahead. Uh, so this is a bit tricky because how do you print out? Um, so let's first off, to do that, we need to figure out how we want to print out a piece, an individual piece. So we've got color size right there. So instead, what we'll do for that to make it a bit more easy to represent, I think I'm going to call, I'm going to go ahead and say, I've got a return str self.color dot and then we'll capitalize it sorry well, we are going to turn it to uppercase and only grab the first letter and we get to get the first letter of that and then we'll do the rest but instead of putting in the space put in a number so basically it will print out b0 it'll print out b1 b2 b3 or o2 o1 o2 or o3 for the cult for the piece um so now that we have that what can we to print the board status i can just simply say def print board And we are going to print out self dot
let's see, I'm going to print out self. Oh, yeah, that's all I need self for row in self dot grid. So for every item in the row, what am I going to do? Let's go ahead and print self dot print str self dot grid and then we're going to say say ah no 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 we need an s loop for for piece in row so for every row in the grid so for every piece in the row first what are we going to do i'm going to say print out piece dot str the string the piece means string of the piece we're going to create an output for that row is equal to the is equal to that for piece in row string piece output is equal to output plus equals string piece Plus the t uh, plus a a tab. Let's go ahead and say plus a tab. Print output. After we go through all those, and yeah. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, so let's go ahead and make a new board first off, just to see what's going to go on. So let's go ahead and start testing. So board um, is equal to board, make it like that. And now, um, actually even better, we could just simply turn this into the uh now nah, we'll just do it we'll just do it like print board board dot print board and we've got none and we've got a bunch of nuns so now um if i create a piece so now if i go ahead and let's go ahead and create a piece and we're going to try testing it by placing it so um so I'm going to create a new piece. It's going to be, um, it needs a color and a size. Two, one. So color is going to be blue and it's going to be of size one. I'm going to say it's piece P and I'm going to say board dot place um yeah okay board dot place we want to place p and let's we'll put it in the middle and let's see what happens so we've got a blue piece of size one in the middle um okay then i'm going to say let's go ahead and say uh piece is an orange piece now of size two. And we're going to also put that on, on one. So now I've just simply swapped it out. Orange two gets placed on top of that, no problem. And now let's go ahead and say board dot move. piece, which we actually don't need if we use the ro old row and old column, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and say, we're going to move it from one, one to zero, zero. And now we should uncover our old piece, which it does like that. Wonderful. And there's other thing we need to do over here, which is that if it's not, ah, uh, so place 
Um, there's one more thing I want to do for place, which is that if it's not none, we gobble up a piece, but otherwise we say uh, piece actually it should gobble anything when it's there. So we should remove this if not none, because if there's nothing there, then we should say that what's been eaten is nothing, which is that's what it'll do. So let's go ahead and rerun this. And we got no errors and that's great. So we've got basically the basic mechanic. So I know it seems like we did not so much, but it's a big program kind of conceptually. There's a lot of parts but by basically breaking all the parts down. Yeah, we wrote a lot of lines, but we've got like all the core mechanics of this done. So we got to basically everything else is like checking to make sure that we've got a um, consistent thing. Let's go ahead and check to see if we've got a winner now by basically saying um, blue. And now we're going to do a board. Dump. And what we'll do is we'll do uh, Lou three, and we're going to put it at two, at um, zero zero one one two two. Um, okay, so that should work. And now let's go ahead and see print board dot is winner. And yes, we have a winner on the diagonal. And just to make sure that I'm not making it up, I should probably print out this at the end over here. So we have an, so yes, we don't have a mistake. It says false at the beginning. And then when we're done placing things, we get a winner. Great, we'd probably want more robust testing in there. Well, I'm fairly sure, so this is, so we've got a lot of done stuff. So what we don't have is basically asking the players what they want to do to take turns. Okay. And then we're not asking the players what they want to do to um, and not asking the players. So we're sorry. We haven't asked the players what they want to do. And we haven't checked basically is what they want to do a valid move. Okay. So basically, um, so let's go ahead and write something that'll take user input and that will inform our error checking. Okay. So, uh, def, uh, get input. Okay. So getting input's a pain and I don't want it to crash. So, um, yeah. So get input from, from, so I want to get the input from the user. I don't want it to crash. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to say, Hey, uh, please enter whether you want to place or move. Okay. So, and that's actually going to necessitate me rewriting player just slightly over here, like I was talking about earlier, because right now they're kind of just stuck in a list. Everything's just stuck in a list like this. And that doesn't really tell me too much. I have this is all the pieces we have in here. And I can say, okay, um, I mean, I, what I can do is, yeah, yeah. Okay, this will work just as it is. Um, please input whether you want to place or move. Um, and what we're going to need is we're going to need the player to do this because we need to know what pieces the player has. So first things first, um, so 
yeah first things for yeah so we're going to get asked if they want to play or move and i'm going to say their choice is equal to this um while yeah i'm going to be sneaky here so first off though right if they have no pieces left they can't choose they have to move a piece on the board so so if board dot oh, sorry so if player player dot pieces if the length of that is equal to zero then they have no choice as to what they're doing so choice is equal to an empty string at first if the if the length of the if you so basically here's the list of all the pieces if it's equal to zero we don't have anything left so uh choice is going to be equal to is equal to move all right no matter what Okay, and now here's my 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 the fun bit I think, uh, or rather the clever bit. While choice is not equal to move or sorry and and choice is not equal to and I'm just gonna say for because m and choice is. And actually what I could, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna be even, I'm gonna be dumber than this. I'm gonna be horrible. Uh, while M not in choice, right? While the letter M is not in the, what in the person chose. And P is not in choice. So if they put in anything that has a P, an M in it, we're going to do a move. If they do anything with a P in it, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a, so if they do anything with an M in it, it's going to be a move. If they do anything with a P in it, it's going to be a place, which I can do because they, they don't share any letters. So I can be a bit clever like that. And so this will, and so if the person use, puts in M or they put in MOB or if they put in MOBE, there'll be a move, otherwise it'll be a place. Uh, but if we don't have any pieces left, we can't place anything down, so it has to be a move. So we'll set choices equal to move, and then we will skip the uh, while loop. Oh, trust me, it does something. It does something, trust me, Python. Okay, next. So we've gotten, uh, so basically, uh, so now that we've got that, we can basically have uh, two blocks. Uh, if, which is basically what we wanted, which is our move block and our, and our, um, yeah, our move block and our place block, which are mutually exclusive. So I'm gonna do place first. So, If P in choice, right? So if the P was in our choice, do one thing. Otherwise, they want to move something, so we'll do another thing. Yes. Um, and then what I'm going to do is say, hey, OK, now if you want to place something, let's figure out what you want to place. Uh, your pieces are and then input so here I'm going to print out all the pieces and then I'm going to say uh what I'm going to say 
Yeah, actually, I'm going to be, again, I'm going to be clever over here. And I'm going to rewrite the string because really, let's rewrite the string function over here. So instead of player has all this stuff, let's go ahead and rewrite this again. This happens a lot. Don't be afraid to burn down what you wrote and start from scratch, especially, you know. So what do I want to do? I want to basically say, basically, I want to say, here are all the things in my list, but I also want to put the index number into them so I know how to refer to them. So my pieces are going to be, uh, so let's hear, so yeah, let's go ahead and say, which pieces do I want to do? I want to, I want to do, my pieces are, so, yep, output. Actually, this seems pretty good for our the beginning of our output. Output player has, has, and then what I'm gonna do instead over here is I'm going to go for index piece in enumerate, which we haven't seen in a while which just simply gives me the index along with the um, the item. There we go. For index piece in enumerate, we're going to simply we're going to say output equal to string piece plus index. Yeah. I'm going to say plus colon space. And we're going to see what effect that has in a, in a minute. And then same, uh, yep. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab this. So well, basically, I'm just reusing the same thing, but I'm adding in an index for reasons that will be seen in just a bit because the user has to be able to know what the index is if I want to be able to choose what piece I want to place. Okay. Okay. And that's what I need. And now to test this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a player and print it out because that will create all those pieces as well. So um, p is equal to player print p, print the player. Uh, oh, got to give him a color. This is going to be the orange player. So orange player has 0, uh, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, 2, 3, 0, 2, 401501. Okay. Now, because of the way capitals look, I'm actually going to go ahead and just simply switch this over here from upper to lower. It, because the code is agnostic as to what's being compared, we can actually use any colors we want, but the lower won't be confused for, but O's won't be confused for zeros in that case. Okay. So now that we've got that, we can say, um, we can say, we can now say, so now if we want to place a piece, this you're wondering why in the world did I do that? So now if I want to place a piece, all I have to do is say, hey, uh, print the player. And guess what string I'm going to get out? I'm going to grant out the orange player has this input. Please enter the number of the piece you want to play. Uh, I'm going to say num is equal to negative, um, negative, whatever. I just put in a string, something that is not a valid index. 
right? So num is equal to there. And what we're going to say is, again, we need a while loop to basically say, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. While um, zero to num, while num is between zero and length of of player uh, pieces. Basically, what am I doing here? Well, simply put, I'm going to just keep asking them for a number. Um, and then I'm going to, so input, and then I got to turn it into an integer to do that. And so if I can't turn it into an integer, mind you, it's going to crash, but that's okay for right now. So because type, type checking is a bit more difficult here. So print player, we've got our number. And okay, yeah, why not put this here? So they want to put that, so they want to place that piece, okay. So if they want to place that piece there, we select it. We have them select the valid piece using this loop, okay. And now we have them basically uh, say where they want to put it, okay. So they have the piece. So now they have to get, we have to get the piece that they want. So um, the piece they've just selected, the piece will be equal to player um, and we can call it, now let's be more precise. It's an index that we're having them select. Even if they don't know that. So uh, index that is equal to, so piece is equal to player dot pieces index so if they put in so if they put in uh three they'll get the uh they'll get the piece at index three the fourth piece which by default would be in a which would be a piece of size two okay so we've got a valid piece but now we got to make sure we don't have any extra so we've got to get rid of it uh player dot which we're just going to do by saying player dot pieces dot um and let's see what functions we can do to remove things in Python, because that's such an operation I rarely use, right? So, so let's see, self.pieces. Dot, uh, dot remove removes the first occurrence of that value. Fine, that that makes sense. Um, it will figure out what the value is based on the memory location of it, I believe. So no problem. But even if it got the other piece, that'd be perfectly fine. Pieces dot remove piece. Player dot remove pieces dot remove that piece now. So we just want to get rid of that. Now that we've got the piece, we've kind of pulled it out. It's kind of in our hand now. We've removed it. So it's no longer in the player's inventory. And so we need to ask, okay, you've got a piece now. Um, um, X is equal to, so now we need to ask where they want to put it, um, which is the row and column. Row is equal to one. So we're going to say the row is equal to, again, something random, but, but nonsense. And again, something random, but not a valid one. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just kind of creating them so I can have a while loop. So, um, so while um, so let's see. So I'm gonna say while row is less is between zero. Sorry, is so row has to be oh right. Sorry, over here we have to have less than or equal to zero because it zero is a valid index. So while zero is less than or equal to row zero is less than or equal to two over here, right? Those are the valid in indices for a row, zero, one, or two. And uh, 
I'll basically Okay, so while oh right, no, I messed this up. So while not that and while um go ahead and do this not this and not so while we don't have something valid is basically when we want while we want to learn while so while it's not in the valid range and p stop um and what is the piece one we can do um so that's all i can do right there so so while it's valid in there and Okay, and the and the row column is either empty, so self dot grid row column equal equals none, or if it's not empty, piece dot can gobble the piece that's there. See, everything I wrote had a reason for it. So either if it's empty or if it's not empty, can I put it there? And the piece is empty or so, except that, uh, uh that's not the clause i want i'll figure out the clause in a minute figure out the rest of the clause but basically i've got to make sure that i can gobble it so but now while we're doing that we simply ask them hey uh row is equal to um is input Enter int input enter a row column in input enter a column. Okay, so wow. And so now what we check is while it's not, so we grab our row, we grab our column. So while it's, so if it's not in, in this range, keep doing it. If it's not in this range, keep doing it. And we need to make sure basically that, uh, and so then, so if it's in a valid range, then basically you got to check two things. Uh, can we place it there? And it looks like we're doing the is valid just in here. So check if a proposed move is valid. So, hey, we can just do that in there. So that'll be easier. Is valid. Is valid is valid place self piece row column yeah that would be easier this will be much easier to do if i put in a function over here and i can just simply not the function okay so if is a valid place. Okay, we're going to select our piece. 
I'll probably only be able to get this part done. The whole um, checking the move, uh, the just putting it in. It's a very large program, as you can see. And again, these non numbers are nonsense. I just made them up because they are inside this range, which would mean that this while loop will fire. And I use a while a lot of while nots because those basically say, well, it's incorrect, keep doing the while loop. Well, it's, well, it's not correct, do the while loop. So, uh, so the first thing we need to see is that if, uh, so first off, if self.grid uh, row column, if that's empty, congratulations. Uh, then I can put it there. That's awesome. Return true. Uh, if I can't, if I can't put it there, else return uh, piece dot can gobble self dot sorry piece yeah self dot grid row column and suddenly the logic becomes a lot easier and because can gobble that's going to be uh right over here which simply says hey i'm going to try to gobble this other piece if i'm bigger i can gobble it and that will return true or false which makes this function return true or false which by the way means i can just put this over here really easily and not is and not self dot uh, is valid place. Piece. Row. Column. So while the, um, so again, what, what is this horrid monstrosity I wrote actually saying? So while the row is not in the range and the column is not in the range and it's not a plate, and the row and column and piece combination don't work. Just give me another one, please. You got to give me something valid so that I can put it there. And then when that's finally done, I can say, um, I can say self dot place. Piece, row, call. And we're done with that part. The only thing we're not done with is the move and basically check uh, swapping through between the board. So we can now, but we can now check, right? I've got a player, uh, I've got a board. And now what I can do is I can say, hey, board dot get input um, and for uh, player P. And now we can, and then I can do it again. Uh, actually, I'm gonna say for player O for orange and player B for blue. Okay. And then we are going to say, get input for O. And by the way, I'm kind of chanting in my head, please work, please work, please work, because that's never failed me before. It's failed me a lot, actually. So now what I'm going to do is, OK, so whether I want to place or move, well, considering that all I have uh, have valid is place, I'm going to put in that, which says, hey, it's a place, because I can put it. Remember, my function said as long as it had a P in it, it's happy. OK, orange player has 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to put in, uh, I want to play 248. Notice that it's not letting me do something if it's not in the valid range, which is cool. So I want to play piece um, two, which would be an O, which would be a size two piece. And I got an index out of range. But where in the world is this? This is a huge program. Module, boom, 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 is valid place, line 95. So it tells me I got a, I put in a zero here. So what happened here? It said, hey, if row, it said list index is out of range. 
list index is out of range. So where is that coming from? So, and that was called in line 196. So, and, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna just double check to make sure that everything is okay. Uh, print, I'm going to go ahead and just simply make to make sure that I'm not messing up because I think I am, but I have a feeling I know what's going on. Print row, because it didn't let me, oh, it didn't let me choose the row and column. So obviously the row and column are those dummy values I set up. So I want it, so I didn't want this to fire, but I thought because I thought it would, uh, Oh, right. Let's see. I thought it wouldn't fire because of that, but I'll make sure that basically, you know what? Wow, not is valid place. Why make it uh, uh, hard on myself? Uh, if, yeah, if row, so if row is less than, so I'll just put this over here. Again, don't be afraid to take a torch to what you're writing. If you, what you're writing, see if you immediately think of a way that might be easier to do it or better to do it. It's a very valuable tool to learn. And yes, I wear them at times. So if you need to leave, you can. I'm going to try my best to just finish this up so that we can see it work in action because uh, I hate to leave things uncompleted. So if um, if let's see if that's equal to false, return false, and we're going to just do the same for for our. Right, if it's not in between that and it's not in between that, if it's not a valid thing, return false. Um, and now basically we say, well, it's not a valid place. And that while loop now is amazingly more readable. Okay, so um, we're gonna place, I wanna move piece two. And it says list index is out of range in is valid place. I'm not sure why, but that is at line 100. So if row, you know what? I'll try to be more direct. If row is, if row is less than zero, or row is greater than, or row is greater than two. If row is greater than is less than zero or row is greater than two, return false. Otherwise, it should be this. And it should be within range. No, no, no. Yeah, a lot of nuns. Okay. Place one. Okay. So now we have to debug this manually. Print row, print call. Okay, two, two, a P, two. And what did it say? So we got our numbers. So if num is, so if row is less than zero, oh, oh it should be call over here. So those are our rows and our columns. And be, so those should be, so if row is, if column is 
less than one of those things or row is less than one of those things, it should basically say, hey, that's not cool, right? Um, I mean, it worked here, it worked just here over here. So row column, let's go ahead and do negative one and negative two over here. Use valid place, piece row, piece column. Okay. And, okay. Now, place zero. Want to place or move? Ooh. Please enter. Ah, okay, it's working now, I think. Yeah, it's working now, great. It's probably just something with my dummy numbers that I said didn't matter and they actually did matter. I bet you that was the case. I bet you there was a overflow and whatever. But now what we can do, and now the game is simply doing a loop that alternates between the players. And now, so, okay, we are going to say, we are going to place, we are going to, we are going to place at, we're gonna place zero at zero, zero. Ah, right, it wasn't print board, it was, I literally had a print board method, always forgot. Board dot print board. Mm -hmm. No column. Oh, but negative one and negative two are valid indices. So I may not have fixed my problem. I may have just replaced it with another one. Well, self. Oh, okay, okay, play, five, zero, zero, so it did fix it, I want to place one, and I want to enter blue, uh, blue, Let's go with the two. Enter a row, zero, zero, and we and we put that over. And now we want to place. Um, as you can see, we have less pieces now, so I'm going to put zero on three, three. Oh, but that doesn't work because there is no three, three. It's two, two. There we go. Works. It works. And so all that's left is to put in a main function for our while loop and to complete this else statement, which handles the place, which is basically the same, only we have to move one piece to another place. All right. So that was, uh, that was a lecture.